do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! Black history in the United States and protests go hand in hand, and people of color have had to continually advocate for equal rights. Police are advancing again. The last year has brought this ongoing struggle to the forefront, but it's also shed light on the stark contrast between two Americas, where a peaceful black protest was met with violent police clashes, but a deadly insurrection left officers overrun. What we see is that black folks simply, and people of color simply don't have the latitude to act out publicly, whether it's righteous or not, in ways that whiteness is always allowed to act out publicly. When you see the level of force that was erected in response to Black Lives Matter over the summer in D.C., those protesters would have never even gotten close to the Capitol to the way that we saw those white protesters on January 6th. That disparity in police presence at the Capitol has led many to ask, would the response have been different if the protesters were Black? There's always been a sense that uh, Black folks were asking for more than they deserved, and that they were willing to engage that by taking on forms of violence. What Black Lives Matter is, is a direct extension um, of what we saw with the civil rights movement in the 1960s and, and nonviolent protests even before then. It also ties into, I would say, a, a much longer history that creates expectations that we're still trying to unpack or, or still trying to dismantle in 2020, 2021. And those are expectations that Black people are dangerous and violent. And, and law enforcement, unfortunately, in too many cases, carries that mythology. In contrast, the, the thinking on January 6th that white people are the power brokers in society may create a very different and more hands-off police response. In the days leading up to Donald Trump's Save America rally, there were warning signs of the violence to come. They're not taking this White House. We're going to fight like hell, I'll tell you right now. The Capitol Police, and they basically have said this, that they did have intelligence about that this could be an unruly crowd. If you're going to be the zero and not the hero, we're coming for you. The police chief, this is his own words, went to the sergeant at arms and said, I think we might really need the National Guard. And they waved him off and apparently told him they didn't like the optics of having the military there. Police are squabbling with protesters. Oh, there we go. In contrast with other events in D.C. last year, additional state and federal law enforcement agencies were not pre-staged ahead of the riot. And as the crowd pushed past barricades and made their way up the Capitol steps, police were quickly overwhelmed. For whatever reason, the decision was made to basically, in my view, set up the Capitol Police to fail. And that's exactly what happened. You have low barricades that hook together. You, you can virtually step over them. You only really have the Capitol Police. You don't have the National Guard. Nobody's in riot gear. Uh, you're too close to the building. I mean, it sort of goes on and on and on. I've never been in this house. How about you? Although many were later arrested on federal charges, on the day of the insurrection, only 61 people were arrested. D.C. police arrested more than five times as many people at the June 1st Black Lives Matter protest. The event that took place at the Capitol shined a light on what's seen as a double standard in police response between black and white protesters. To see the police response against Black Lives Matter protesters over the late spring and summer with a very different response on, on January 6th was quite striking. And certainly one of the explanations for that was the different racial composition of the crowds at those two protests and the different particular aims and grievances of those crowds. Following the death of George Floyd in May 2020, demonstrators held protests across the country. In response, at least 40 cities imposed curfews and National Guard members were activated in 15 states and Washington, D.C. The Black Lives Matter protests were overwhelmingly peaceful. If we look at the statistics, very few injuries, uh, very few protests had property damage, even though that was what was often highlighted in the media. It's not surprising that even when we see 
nonviolent protests as we did throughout the summer of 2020. And I'm thinking explicitly about the protests in Washington, D.C., you know, in which we suddenly see flyovers, right? And, and we see a response to it that is not in line with what the threat actually is on the ground. In June 2020, police used overwhelming force against Black Lives Matter protesters in Washington, D.C. You have this spontaneous event where the president decides that he wants to hold a photo op in front of a church. And so he gets this reinforcement of people in riot gear to literally move this peaceful crowd by and large with pepper spray, etc. So total overreaction to what was going on. The event at Black Lives Matter and the event at the Capitol were both colossal failures for law enforcement. Throughout history, there have been dozens of peaceful black protests met with a disproportionate police response. You know, when we talk about the genius of Martin Luther King beyond his oratory, but strategically understanding that nonviolent protests that was going to be broadcast around the world would bring attention to the fact that these folks were, were protesting nonviolently, but yet they were treated in very violent ways. We feel that we have to do it this way in order to bring the evil out into the open so that this community will be forced to deal with it. If there is one element of contemporary protest that changed the game, it is no question that it's handheld devices. Beginning with the Rodney King case back in 1991, where a white man who was in an apartment innocently pulled out his video camera and captured what was happening to Rodney King on tape, it was a game changer. Over the last decade, incidents of police abuse captured on camera have skyrocketed. Take a knee! Take a knee! The way that the Black Lives Matter generation has been able to weld social protests in the streets, nonviolent, along with social media, has allowed them to pay attention to some of the disconnections between right their protests and what's actually how they're being perceived by some white Americans. We ain't hurt not one cop! But you want to look at me like I'm your enemy. Videos of the 2014 Black Lives Matter protests in Ferguson, Missouri went viral and brought intense scrutiny to police violence. The Ferguson piece was really important because you got to see on the ground the way that protesters were being tear gassed right? The way that they could respond immediately to what was happening to them, right? We didn't have to watch newsreel footage as we did during the civil rights movement. Just as the police response in Ferguson illuminated an issue in policing, so did the discrepancy in law enforcement's response in Washington, D.C. The riots on January 6th were a sort of crowning moment on a number of events that were all pointing in the same direction. Here is another reminder that that battle over how we understand who's entitled in our society and whether certain groups should be privileged over others is an ongoing dispute. For many white Americans, it was as if they had just found out that white supremacy existed, <laughs> that, that white supremacy is also intimately connected to law enforcement uh, and even our military forces. You know, this is something that folks who've been fighting against white supremacy and dealing with anti-racist politics have long understood. What happened on January 6th and the contrast with how the protesters were treated uh, this past summer when it was Black Lives Matter. I'm hopeful that for some people that is a, a moment when their eyes open up. Potentially for people, it shakes their complacency and shakes their willingness to overlook what to them might have in the past been more subtle signs of the racism that's baked into U.S. history. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.